right. All right, I think my screen is up. Yes, it looks good. Okay, thanks. All right. Um, good afternoon. Um, thanks to the organizers for the opportunity to uh, to talk to you today, and for sort of extending their definition of of, of a high performance computing um, to let me talk about um, uh, some topics in in uh, in high throughput computing and interoperability that the developers of Sci4 and and Molsi have been working on with the QC archive project. So for a quick introduction to Sci4, um, it is a quantum chemistry program uh, written in C++ and Python with the computationally demanding portions in C++ and a Python driver to, to coordinate them all. Um, we strive for, uh, for easy uh, user input um, with through five main functions, energy, gradient, optimize, Hessian, and, and frequency. And because this is a Python extension module, um, the native input uh, is in Python. So you could do something like import Sci4, define a geometry, define any options, and then run uh, and then run a model chemistry through the energy function. Um, in addition to a Python input, uh, you could also do a text-based input, um, which requires rather fewer characters. Or for for certain analytic uh, calculations, um, a schema input. Uh, we're particularly interested in in uh, in intermolecular interactions. And so one of the, which could be um, taking the energy of two separate molecules, um, if you then bring them closer together, get an interaction energy and find us in, defined as such. Um, and so this is a supermolecular approach and it can be run through, ener through, any, through energy, any quantum chemistry method. Um, but this is rather expensive. Um, it needs high accuracy calculations. And so if you look at the errors of a number of uh, bimolecular complexes at a small basis set, they're widely spread. As you get to larger basis sets, they uh, converge upon an energy, but at great computational cost, as you see by the wide horizontal bars. There are ways to overcome this through composite methods. Um, such as by doing a basis set extrapolation between uh, double zeta and triple zeta basis sets, and this lowers the computational cost, or by separately treating uh, uh, MP2 and couple cluster portions uh, by doing a MP2 basis extrapolation and then a delta correction with couple cluster. So uh, CBS is one of the things that we try to run often. Um, also, uh, many body expansions on, on, on uh, systems um, and basis set superposition error corrections. So if you to take a hexamer, consider its uh, energy as sum of all the monomers uh, plus the sum of all the individual pairs of uh, fragments plus the sum of all individual uh, uh, of fragments um, or the or the or the sum total. So both of these techniques are ones that you could try to apply to, to, to determining the interaction energy of complexes. And uh, if you want to do a simple method, it, a, a simple one of these, uh, you can certainly do it by hand. If you wanted to do a double, triple extrapolation with MP2 and then a couple cluster correction, you could write out the six input files for the dimer and then each of the monomers and submit them all to your local queue. Um, you can run them in parallel because you're submitting it to a queue. Uh, a year later, you can find all the jobs again if you name them systematically. And if you have other programs other than Sci4 on your computer, you can certainly mix and match these uh, in, order to, uh, in order to run them with the best method or the best program. However, the great downside to this is that you're composing multiple files with very slight Iteration variations. So the procedure is manual and there's a high risk of user error. It's 
especially as these uh, become dozens and dozens. So to overcome this in Psi4, uh, we developed a recursive driver uh, where you take the energy, start with the energy gradient or Hessian commands, um, and then have additional functions like a many body uh, function that separates a molecule into from the whole fragment into various uh, subfragments, and then runs the driver again on those. Uh, a finite difference for derivatives um, to take the equilibrium geometry and uh, uh, move that into various uh, displacements in order to uh, run energies on, on each of the displacements. A composite command in order to take the uh, string of a composite input and determine what individual calculations you need to run from each of those. And so then the driver itself uh, becomes a procedure of asking a lot of questions and routing through all of these functions. So a single point energy calculation is pretty straightforward, runs the calculation and gives the energy gradient or Hessian. But a, a nested uh, many body and composite method ends up traversing this whole driver very many times in order to finally get to the, uh, in order to finally produce the desired energy. So this is the second way to run this type of calculation. It's been available in size since 2016. It's all specified through one file, and so the procedure is automated, low risk of error. Um, do an MP2, uh, uh, specify the extrapolation, specify the delta procedure, specify the unit basis set uh, uh, kind of was corrected, and you have the answer. However, all of these are going to be run sequentially, and then you're going to get one big aggregated output file, and you can only run it in Psi4. So those are the downsides. Um, to remedy some of those, uh, we rewrote this into the distributed driver, where the energy gradient of testing, if it's an analytic uh, single point calculation, we call that atomic, and that runs into Psi4. It's directly to Psi4 itself, produces your, your energy gradient of Hessian. Um, but those functions have been rewritten into classes. And so now the many body uh, computer uh, separates the molecules, but instead for each fragment, it returns a QC schema input file, which I'll talk about more shortly. Um, likewise, likewise, a finite difference um, plans uh, for each displacement, it returns QC schema input. For each composite, for the composite computer, for each model chemistry, it returns a QC schema input. And then we have a simple one for the analytic. So now, if you start one of these calculations, it determines which of these, uh, which of these nested classes it needs to go through. And what you get out at the end is a pool of QC schema um, atomic inputs for quantum chemistry specifications to run. These could go directly to be run in Psi4, collect the results, the atomic results, and then run it through each of their plant, uh, each of their assembly functions in order to get the final result. So the simple calculation um, runs directly, whereas the uh, nested calculation goes to the planning function, goes to the other planning function, does the results, and then goes to each of the assembly functions. And this is far easier to, um, to manage. So I've talked about uh, QC schema and QC engine. So what are these exactly? These are components of the uh, QC archive software stack uh, developed by Molsi. These are a number of, of separate projects and, and they're written in order to facilitate the QC archive uh, database that Molsi maintains. But each of these are separate projects and are, can be used um, as components. And these compose the QC archive infrastructure. All these are in Python and are easily uh, PIP or Conda installable. So I'll start with QC schema. This is uh, uh, data layouts and descriptions of building blocks of quantum chemistry calculations, things like molecules, uh, properties, input, output, and this is language agnostic. 
So QCS schema is the communication channel between all pieces of, of, of the ecosystem. In, it's nominally in JSON um, and has been in development for, for, for a number of years, including a, another MLC workshop at Berkeley a few years ago. Um, to start with, there's the molecule. Uh, minimum specification is geometry and the atomic symbols. Uh, this is a very flexible input. So if you were to take these two fragments, uh, you could represent their atomic numbers, whether they're ghosted or not. Uh, the geometry always in atomic units, that is Bohr. Um, the charge and multiplicity, the charge and multiplicity on, on, on any fragments and, and so forth. Uh, the molecule becomes a part of the atomic input, which is the input for a quantum chemistry calculation. So there's the molecule, there's the driver, um, energy gradient, the Hessian the properties. There's the model to be run, that is usually a method and a basis set. And then any keywords that you went past to, to the uh, CMS uh, program. An atomic input then gets run and uh, a quantum chemistry program produces an atomic result. So that includes the input. It also has uh, provenance information about who ran it, um, the results, the properties, any that, any that were collected along the way, the intended results, so an energy or a gradient, um, the full standard uh, output of the quantum chemistry program that you're used to seeing, and uh, for some programs, some wave function information, things like uh, orbitals and eigenvalues and occupations. And atomic results uh, can in turn then become a component of an optimization result, the result from a, from a geometry optimization. So this is entirely a, a, a composable um, setup. Um, it's important to note that QC schema defines data layout only. So if you were to take this input from a quantum chemistry program, um, the only thing that, a that the schema really absolutely nails down is sort of the left-hand side of this, where you put all the data and what uh, general form it should have. Um, the rest of it, um, the molecule and driver, that does uh, tend to be standardized. Um, so the driver becomes the energy and you simply fill in what is known from the domain specific language of the quantum chemistry input into all the slots on the right hand side um, of the uh, input for, for QC engine. So this is gained QC engine input. But you can't check a lot of conventions or anything. Um, next up from QC schema is QC elemental. QC elemental is a Python implementation of QC schema with, uh, with additional validation layers. And then uh, also some uh, utilities like periodic table and physical constants. So if you were to put any of these very flawed molecules, things that have uh, inappropriate elements or molecules too close or unphysical charge, charge multiplicity into uh, QC schema, they would do just fine. But um, QC elemental has an implementation that does strong validation of all of these. And so these are going to uh, complain in QC Elemental and they'll raise uh, helpful uh, uh, errors. So you can have more faith in the QC schema that you're running. Uh, QC Elemental also provides light Python wrappers around, uh, around um, uh, physical constants uh, from, from NIST uh, and uh, periodic table information and uh, uh, unit conversion, um, as well as uh, things like van der Waals radii and covalent radii, just sort of utilities. Uh, next up from QC Elemental is QC Engine. QC Engine is an input output a standardization layer. Um, so it makes sure that it uh, any of the community codes that have done the hard work of encoding uh, quantum chemistry methods um, but which tend to have domain specific language input and output. Um, it allows you to run any of these through, um, through atomic, by specifying an atomic input and uh, producing atomic, output, atomic results. So, um, and also adds some hardware compute configuration like, uh, like specifying memory and nodes. 
um, to actually run a program through QC Engine. Um, you could form an atomic input and then from the command line, simply run QC Engine run on with any, while specifying any of the programs or through a Python API. Uh, again, give the input, the program that you want to use, and then any um, options on how many nodes and, and memory usage. A number of, uh, of community codes have added uh, what we call harnesses uh, to, um, to QC Engine. Um, these are often uh, quantum chemistry programs, but we also have some semi-empirical uh, molecular mechanics, uh, analytic corrections, and, um, and machine learning. Um, we try to get the most accurate uh, output from a, from a CMS program. And so if possible, uh, we run through their API. So things like ADC, Sci4, Terracam, uh, DFTD4. Um, failing that, uh, some programs provide uh, structured results in XML, JSON, or binary. And so things like MolPro and MRChem um, are, are run that way. And uh, as fail safe, uh, there's always uh, text output. And so, um, so many codes have, have their interfaces that, uh, that generate text input and uh, read text results. Um, a few codes have gone a step further and actually uh, implemented QC schema uh, input na natively. Um, what this looks like as a, so, as a sort of map is that the uh, CMS codes, they each have a, uh, a QC engine program harness in QC engine. And a program harness is anything that can uh, extract an energy gradient Hessian or property um, analytically out of a, uh, out of a CMS program. Um, additionally, there are QC engine procedures, which is sort of, sort of anything left over, uh, things that are multi-job, multi-step or need generic or, or, or can act on generic um, specifications. So things like geometry optimizers for geometric or, or opkin can act on anything as long as there's, they can get out an analytic gradient. Um, so with these in place, uh, we have the third method of running our sample calculation, which is with the side distributed driver. So this is now far more orderly and we can extend it. Same input as before, only it's Sci4 calling QC engine calling Sci4. Again, this is automated, but we still have all of these uh, uh, limitations uh, as before. Um, that can be remedied somewhat by instead of running through QC Engine, instead of run instead running through QC Fractal, which is another portion of the QC Archive stack um, responsible for distributed computing. Uh, QC Fractal. Um, Sort of orchestrates uh, the whole compute environment uh, to set up and, and manage uh, parallel compute. And it's also responsible for database storage and the ability to query results from the database. Often we're talking about the QC archive, the, the MQAX um, QC archive database, but you can also run your own uh, that are just as powerful but are locally controlled. For an overview of the full uh, QC archive process. Uh, a user would, uh, would submit a molecule on their client computer um, that would go to Molsi and for their server that's running QC Fractal Server. Um, that would send the command to say a supercomputer where the head node is running QC Fractal Manager that manages distributed compute. Um, that talks to, has adapters uh, for task management uh, software like Dask or Parcel. Those in turn talk to the schedulers, uh, things like Slurm and PPS. And those in turn talk to compute nodes, which run QC Engine and have any number of quantum chemistry uh, programs on them. Um, it can manage uh, multi-site, uh, multi-physical site compute. So it could be talking to both a supercomputer, a local cluster, and to the cloud. So the compute happens, um, results return to the server, results return to the client. And this can be accessed uh, either command line or, or through, through an internet portal. Um, this is the most extensive um, setup for 
uh, for the QC archive uh, software system. Um, but this is very elastic. You can uh, run it on something this big and uh, the OpenMM uh, consortium, no, Open Force Field Consortium um, has been doing this for, for the past two years. Um, or you can have uh, smaller uh, setups of this. So a local single cluster installation would, uh, would co-locate the server and the manager on a head node and then farm jobs out to the local cluster. Or you can shrink it further onto just a single laptop. So you could have the server, the database, the distributed compute, and the local compute all in one place and still be using, and still be using the same software for, for distributed computing. So what this looks like on our test calculation um, is now our run through Sci4. It's actually calling QC Fractal. That's calling QC Engine, and that's calling Sci4 again. A, an input file um, could look like this, um, where you are uh, setting up your plan, um, telling QC Fractal to go compute it, and then um, rerun this file after all the jobs complete and you get back your, your counter post corrected result. Um, the nice thing, of course, is that if you then run another calculation a bit later that is already in the database, then uh, this returns immediately. You should get it back for free. So now we've solved some of our problems. Um, the procedure is still automated. Um, you're running in parallel again, finally. Um, you can easily retrieve your results from the QC Archive database uh, with a query, but you're still only limited to Sci4. Um, and of course, whatever you can run as an energy, you can run as a gradient density. So uh, the next level, um, QC Engine um, still uses the domain-specific language input for quantum chemistry programs. Um, QCDB is another uh, beginning project um, that allows uh, a unified input uh, syntax um, and sort of an API layer on top of on, um, on top of QC Engine. So whereas the uh, Q, whereas the QC engine um, input look like this, um, QCDB um, adds another layer of beta, basis set and keyword standardization so that you don't have to remember the, the game's uh, keywords for this, but can use a general uh, keyword. And so this could be submitted to games or any number of other quantum chemistry programs for QCDB. Uh, so this allows you as users to focus on scientific choices rather than uh, learning domain specific languages. Uh, the uh, internal map, uh, again, the QCDB has uh, its own program harnesses, and these are light wrappers on top of the QC engine program harnesses. And then QCDB procedures are other things that can be extracted from, from existing uh, CMS codes. Uh, And so here's where our things like composite and finite difference and many body uh, procedures lie. And then there's again, a driver that looks much like, uh, looks much like the Sci4 driver in order to coordinate uh, QCD, in order to coordinate programs and procedures. So the fifth way to, to run our sample input um, is now to run it through QCDB, uh, which calls QC engine. And now it can call various uh, quantum chemistry programs. So you could run the MP2 portion in Sci4, the couple cluster portion in, in, in WCHEM. Um, again, specify your basis set superposition correction and, and the molecule. So we still have the low risk of error uh, specification because it's run through a single input file and have the flexibility to mix and match uh, quantum chemistry programs. Um, this is not hooked up to QC Fractal, and so again, it's running everything sequentially. Um, you can't really run this right now because um, the distributed driver portion of this is, is in a development version of QCDB. But the logical extension is to then hook up 
the, uh, the distributed driver to QCDB so that you are running QCDB, which then calls QC fractal, which then calls QC engine, which then calls whatever quantum chemistry program. So we finally returned to all of the advantages that we started with with hand running files. Only now there's uh, only now you can do it uh, in, a, in, in an automated fashion. So I hope to have introduced you to a few of the software components that that Molsi and QC Archive project have been working on. Um, you can use each of these often independently. Um, if you're only interested in the schema, you can run the schema. If you want some extra validation or utilities, you can uh, start with QC Elemental. If you want a standardization of, of data format for running computational molecular sciences programs, you can run through QC Engine. If you want um, work, uh, manage distributed compute, you can run through QC Fractal. Uh, you can let Mulsi store your calculations, or you can um, uh, set up a database and run them yourself. And if you'd like some additional uh, interoperability layers, you can always consider QCDB. So I'd like to acknowledge all the very many people who have uh, been working on this, um, particularly uh, Daniel Smith, who designed both the distributed driver and the whole uh, QC archive, some of the QC archive infrastructure and uh, Ben Pritchard, who is the current showrunner um, for, for QC Archive over at Molsi, and other people at Molsi who have worked on this. Um, a good number of people, some of whom are in the audience, um, been involved in, in the development of QC Schema. Uh, many people have uh, written or supported writing uh, harnesses uh, to to, to hook into the QC archive infrastructure for, for a great many quantum chemistry and general computational molecular sciences programs. Um, people have written uh, optimizers, helped out on, on the procedures, uh, and also to all of the Cyvor developers who have been involved in this. And thank you all for your attention. I'd be glad to answer any questions. Thanks, Sori. that was great. And discussion. So I have one question from Alvaro. He's asking, how difficult will it be to add support for other codes to the QC archive? It is uh, not too hard, um, provided you can express your input in a sort of key value structure. Um, there is, well, there are, of course, about a dozen models um, that are on the QC engine uh, repository. And there's also a short guide for sort of the strategy of how to get started. Um, and you can also join the Slack channel where you can ask any questions and get some help on, on, on getting started. Uh, the link to the Slack is directly off the GitHub uh, page. I guess you can also paste it in the chat. So there is another question from uh, John and Kim. He's asking, excellent development by community. Do you collect performance or tele, uh, telemetry data to monitor and optimize resource utilizations? Let me summon the... Ah, yes. Um, every QC engine run um, collects the... Um, some memory use, the hardware, uh, like like the type of processor, um, the all the version numbers of what was run, um, basically anything that's collectible through a convenient Python package. Um, there have been sort of uh, every once in a while, someone runs a query on the on the MQuax. Um, to see what's been, uh, to see what type of, uh, of, of, of computers people are running on, but there hasn't been an extensive study of everything that really could be extracted from, 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 from that data. Thank you. In the interest of time, I suggest um, the discussions uh, be continued in the chat. Um, and thank you again, Lori.